Praise God. I want to welcome everybody this afternoon to this inaugural event. Every good, great thing starts small. Jesus, the Son of the living God, as mighty and as powerful as he is, he came as a child. And the Bible says that the boy grew in wisdom and in stature and with favor with God and men. And that is my prayer for this men's fellowship, this men's meeting, and all the men and all the members of Tola, that in the name of Jesus, we will grow in stature, we will grow in wisdom, we will grow in favor with God and with man, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very quickly, my assignment here is very short. I have to give an exhortation before we go into the uh, discussion forum. Uh, for some of you that are wondering, the men's fellowship, we are doing something different. We are not having a regular service. Instead, we're having a discussion forum to celebrate or to kickstart this great move of God. So this afternoon, I would like to share with us from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6 to 8, which is the theme of this conference this year. The theme for this conference this year is present with the Lord, present with the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Father, thank you again for another opportunity. I pray that your word will change lives and release destinies today in the name of Jesus. And I decree that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind, to turn men from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. And as the word of the Lord goes forth this afternoon, the power of God goes with it to bring this decree and every other decree to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. The Bible says, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that, Whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Please take note of this. This scripture, they always read it when people die, but it's not only for when people pass. Let's read it again. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Verse 8, we are confident, I say, and willingly, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Absent in the body, but present with the Lord. What does this mean? To be present with the Lord means you must be absent in the body. God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24, the Bible says God is a spirit. And they that must worship him, they that must walk with him, must do so in spirit and in truth. To be present with the Lord, you must be absent in the body. This means you must be dead to the body. You must be dead to the flesh. You must be dead to carnality. You must be dead to the things of the world, the pleasures and the pressure of the world must mean nothing to you. To be present with the Lord means also to be dead to self. You cannot serve two masters. Verse 7 of that Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 rather, tells us that to be absent with the Lord is to be present in the body. So you cannot be present in the body and when I mean body, I don't mean your physical body. I mean in the flesh. You cannot be present in the flesh and present with the Lord at the same time. What does it mean to be present with the Lord? It means to be dead to self and to be one with Christ. To be dead to yourself and to be one with Christ. This means... To be spiritually minded. To be present with the Lord means to be spiritually minded. I'm very happy I'm talking to men today. 
Because God expects us to lead our families in spirituality. To be present with the Lord means to be spiritually minded. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. The Bible says, For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Being present with the Lord means to be spiritually minded. As a man, as a male, as a father. To be dead to the things of the flesh. To let go the things that pertain to the flesh. And cling to the things that pertain to God. Spirituality. Is the foundation for a solid Christian home. You want to have a solid Christian home, whether now that you are a single or now that you are married, you must embrace spirituality. It is lack of spirituality that brings problems to the home. Do you know that there is no way you can operate the fruit of the Spirit, the nine fruit of the Spirit, and not have a godly home? The ninth fruit of the Spirit, love, <laughs> joy, peace, patience, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. A happy home is a product of two spiritual beings. People who have, uh, who have embraced spirituality. To be present with the Lord means to embrace spirituality. You know, statistics shows that if a woman goes to church, there is a 13%, I'm sorry, a 17% chance that the whole family will give their hearts to the Lord. If a woman is more spiritual than the husband, there is a 17% that the whole family will give their hearts to the Lord. But if a man... It's leading that spiritual drive. Listen to this. There is a 93% chance. 93% chance. When a man leads the move, leads in spiritual things, there is a 93% chance that the whole family will give their hearts to the Lord. God wants us as men to embrace spirituality as a way of life. To become all that he wants us to be. I've come to discover, for example, that it is easier to lead in the home when the parents, both parents, are spiritual and create an atmosphere of spirituality in their homes. There is more peace in the home. Huh. There is a song that we sing that we sang while I was growing up. I think they still sing it. I haven't sang it corporately in a long time. It's goes to us that when Jesus is in a family, you have a happy, happy home. When Jesus is in a family, you have a happy, happy home. When Jesus is in the family, happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. When Jesus is in the family, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. The same, when Satan's in the family, trouble, trouble, oh, trouble, trouble, oh, trouble, trouble, oh. When Satan's in the family, trouble, trouble, oh, trouble, trouble, oh. Satan will not come to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. God wants us. It's easier to lead your wife. Whether now or in the present. Once she can trust that your relationship with God is solid. You can quote me that anywhere in the world. Do you know why women are attracted to their pastors? 
It's not because the pastor is finer than their husband. Women know that the real danger is when there is spiritual danger. So they run to cover themselves under somebody who has the spiritual capacity to cover them. The real troubles and struggles of life are not physical. They are not only mental. They are mostly spiritual. That is why most women will gravitate to their pastors. Some will even honor the pastors than their husband. I'm not saying that is right, but I'm telling you as a man, to get back that honor, get back to spirituality. Your wife knows that you don't pray. Your husband know, your wife knows that you don't fast. Your husband, your, I'm sorry, your wife knows that you, you are only spiritual in church. That's why she doesn't honor you as much. We must step up as men. I'm not preaching this morning, I'm exhorting. And I believe God that this word will prick the heart of somebody. And you will let go of that canal song. What are you doing with Shakira? What are you doing with Tupac? What are you doing with your songs? Some even play those, those songs, those ungodly videos, while their children are there. And they come the next day to sing Hosanna to the Lord. You can't fake it to make it in this kingdom. You have to become it. You have to be a, a man of the spirit. It's easier to lead your wife. Your wife will obey you, will submit to you, will love you, your children will respect you when they know that you have a solid walk with the Lord. I challenge you, single men, start building now. Married men, continue building. And if you haven't started, start now. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And to be carnally minded is there. This is the major responsibility of man. Look at what God said concerning Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18 Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 to 19. Amen. My son just came to give me some moral support. <laughs> Genesis 18, verse 17 to 19. See what God said about Abraham as the responsibility of man. And when I'm talking about man, I'm talking about the male gender. The Bible says, and the Lord said, <laughs> shall I hide from Abraham? The thing which I do, seeing that he will yet become, verse 18, verse 18, give me quickly, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Look at that. Abraham had that relationship with God. That's why Sarah could not leave him. Despite the challenge of not having a child, Abraham could still, tr uh, Sarah could still trust that this man worked with God. Look at the kind of conversation God is having with Abraham. Conversation about nations. Conversation about the earth. Conversation about what's about to, what's about to happen. This was why Sarah could rest comfortably under the bosom of Abraham. No matter the challenge. No matter the obstacle. No matter the difficulty, because she knows this man has a quality work with God. Let's keep on reading. Verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great man, for I know him. This is where I'm going. Verse 19. For I know him. God is making boast of Abraham. He said, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and that they shall keep the way of the Lord. To do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. For I know him. Can God say that about you? I know him that he will raise a godly household for me. The household that will keep the way of the Lord. Men, we must wake up. Men, we must stand up. We must rise up. We must embrace spirituality. We must create a spiritual environment in our home. We must raise up altars, spiritual altars, where our children and our spouse can be exposed to meeting the Lord. 
where they can have divine encounters. Let your, your environment, let your home, let it be saturated. And, and you know, you can't fake these things if you don't become it. So first become it. Become a spiritual man. Become a man of the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Then you'll be able to lead your home in the realm of the spirit. The Lord give us understanding and grace in the name of Jesus. I saw this clip and we're going to play it very soon. I think we're having some audio quality issues. But if you can see it, I think it has been uh, transcribed. I saw this clip by a woman of God, Pastor Sarah. She, she, she hit the nail on the head. I'm going to have them play that clip. It's about a minute long. I want us to see it. And I want us to be blessed by it. Don't worry if you don't hear the audio. Just read this, the transcription. Okay. Okay, go, that's even better. So I'm being told that the online viewers, you will be able to hear the audio. That's fine. Let's play it in one minute for them to watch. Go ahead now. Amen. I hope you are able to at least catch some clips of glimpse of what that video is about. The volume is not the, the best, but I'm glad that they were able to uh, uh, trans transcribe. Is that what it's called? Subtitle. Yes, subtitle is the word I'm looking for. What she's saying in essence is that our home is our government as men. And we must model Christ, who is his spirit in our homes. If you fail in this, you have failed as a man. It would have been better if you were not born. We must rise up to this responsibility and take our position as men. As I close, Romans chapter 8 verse 13, the Bible says, For if ye live after the flesh, Romans 8 verse 13, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. I pray that every man here will choose life today in the name of Jesus. I pray that every one of us will establish a relationship with God and keep the relationship going in the mighty name of Jesus. We must ensure that we have a genuine relationship with God. We must be present with the Lord always. Make sure you are always present. Make sure you are present. Make sure you are always in the presence of the Lord. So that just in case the devil comes to discuss your matter before the Lord, you'll be there. Remember what happened to Job? Job was everywhere, but the day the devil came to discuss him with God, he was absent. Let's read that very quickly. Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 10. 
This is why you must be present with the Lord always. So that when the devil, who is the accuser of the brethren, comes your way, comes before the presence of the Lord, you will be there. So shut him up. Job chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. The only person missing was Job. And Job was the subject of that meeting that day. But he was absent from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Let's read verse 8 and 9. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and assured evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for naught? Let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Job was not present with the Lord. The day the devil came to accuse him before the Lord. All the sons of men came. Even the devil showed up. Job was absent. Don't be absent in the presence of the Lord. Be present in the Lord. Be present before the Lord. Be present in the presence of the Lord. We must model spirituality and create altars for divine encounters in our home. Men, it's important. Please be present with the Lord. I could continue and continue in this light and hammer on this for a while, but I want the Holy Spirit to interpret this to you. Have you been present with the Lord? Do you have a relationship with the Lord? Does the Lord know you by name? Do you know him? Do you know him? Or are you going to be like the sons of Sceva who says in the name of the Lord that Paul preaches? Can they say in the name of your God? Bless God for the patriarchs, our fathers in the Lord, that we can call on their God like Elisha called on the Lord of Elijah and he showed up. Can people call on your God and he will show up? This is the challenge for us men. This is the challenge. So I'd like us to pray. And I'd like us to ask God for grace. Lord, help me to be like you. Help me to be like you. I want every man to pray. Lord, help me. Help me to be like you. Help me to be like you. To model you. To think like you. To act like you. Help me to be like you. In all of my ways. Shall we lift up our voice to heaven? And begin to ask the Lord. Cry unto the Lord. Lord, help me to be like you. Help me to be like you. Help me to think like you. Help me to talk like you. Help me to walk like you. Help me to do things like you would. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. For by strength shall no man prevail. Not by power nor by might. Zechariah 4 verse, 8, verse 6. Not by power nor by might. But by my spirit said the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me to be like you. Help me to be a good example in conduct, in manner, in lifestyle, in conversation, in speech. Help me to be like you. Help me to be like you. When everyone is watching, when no one is watching, behind the scene and before the scene, help me, God. Help me, Father. Help me to live like you. Help me to walk in your ways. Help me to talk like you. Help me to be who you have created me to be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. We give you praise. Lord, we ask this afternoon for the grace to be all you have created us to be as men. Give us wisdom. Give us strength. Give us the grace and let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen and amen. I'd like to thank everyone who has shown up and those who are on their way or those who are here. Thank you for being a part of this great beginning. I believe, God, that this will mark the beginning of great things in our lives in Jesus' name. We're going to end the live streaming now and we're going to go into our discussion session. 
And I pray that it will be more impactful than this in Jesus' mighty name. Please don't forget before we stop streaming, we're going to be here tomorrow, Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So please let us um, remember that tomorrow is going to be a special service. It's the first service of the month. We're going to have our activate service. The activate service is also our anointing service. The first Sunday of the month, we always anoint ourselves with oil. Why do we do it on the first Sunday? Please, you may be seated. God bless you. The first Sunday, according to the Jewish tradition, the first press from the oil, the first press of the oil is for kings, for rulers, for nobles. All right? So the first oil of the year, of the month, is for us as kings and priests. Don't forget that. Also, I'm going to be starting a new series of teachings next week, Sunday, uh, tomorrow which is next Sunday, titled The Mind of Christ. The Mind of Christ. You don't want to miss it. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. The mind of Christ. I believe God, it will be a great time of teaching and a great time of encounter with the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.